This is the StoryWorks Roundtable, where we have conversations about craft. Because becoming a successful author begins with writing a great story. Hello and welcome to this week's StoryWorks Roundtable. Today, Catherine and I are talking about sex scenes. This is going to be a clean conversation about the craft of writing about intimate moments in your stories. Of course, we will be referencing sex because that's what we're talking about. <laughs> and uh, Catherine, you've got a special consideration over there. I do, so. yeah. I've got a four-year-old in the other room, so there will be lots of um, obfuscating, maybe. Be the word. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be walking around it here, which is good. I mean, that just means that, you know, if you're listening with someone, little, small child, you know that we are taking that into consideration. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> Of course, we will be saying the word sex. So if your yes. child is a parrot, you uh, know. We're sorry. Can, yes, we apologize. <laughs> so. We've yeah. all been there. <laughs> yes. So, okay, sex scenes. I, You know, I think they're often done not very well. I would agree with you. Yeah. So do we need to write them just because everybody has a sex life or could have a sex life? Do all of our characters need to have a sex life on the page? Can we uh, create a sense of intimacy and romance without anyone getting into bed or, you know? Yes. (laughs) Yes is the answer to that. I feel like it can be a crutch, Mm, right? Interesting. Um, because I think people say, oh man, like it's everywhere in my genre or I need to do this or that people won't understand that they're, you know, romantically involved in our b- baloney. That's my answer to that. Like if you're not comfortable writing it, don't do it. I mean, why, why would you? I feel like you can craft, if you can't craft a meaningful relationship that the reader believes without that, then I don't think you're doing your job right. Um, because I don't think everybody wants it in their books. Not and not every reader is going to want to read it, um, and those who do are going to find another author who scratches that itch, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> There's so a I good euphemism. I don't feel like you need to feel pressured in any way to write that scene. Um, I also think there are a lot of different ways that you can go about it that can create just as much, you know, whether that's tension or you know. It, intrigue if you want to use it as a you know point in that <laughs> direction you know or you know romantic moment or you know whatever you need in your book you don't you can write it in so many different ways i don't feel like you have to feel limited to the physical action on the page if mm-hmm. that makes sense absolutely yes i think that's very well said and you know if you if one isn't crafting a good effective sex scene you're better off leaving it out right don't put it on the page because Mm -hmm. it's I think with sex scenes it's easy to cross the line into the pornographic Mm -hmm. without meaning Mm -hmm. to because it's like well how much is uh titillating or erotic without being too much is this good or is it gross right Mm -hmm where where's the line and i think that as writers we get so caught up in the headspace of mechanics mm-hmm. whether it's a sex scene or an action scene or just anything with intensity to it um that we can kind of lose touch with our own feeling yes. you know mm-hmm. so a reader might read something and have a pure reaction to it mm-hmm. whether it's positive or negative, whereas we need like a year's distance to get out of that crafting <laughs> headspace and get into right? just a pure emotional response. Exactly. Space. Yeah. I, think, I think it's that what's the purpose of this scene? If mm-hmm. you go into it from that angle, like why is it here? I mean, why do I even want one? in my book. And if you can answer that question, then you're going to be in a better shape to craft it appropriately for the story. Yes. Yeah. 
And I, yes, yeah, so purpose is paramount, you know, and sometimes the purpose is the answer to that question is that it is true to the character. This is mm-hmm. what this character would be doing. And I want to show this because it's important. Yeah, exactly. Through the story. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think, is it a character-driven moment? Okay, great. Is it supposed to be emotional? Great. Is it traumatic? Okay. Is it, you know, does it driving the plot forward because it's, you know, it's something that you don't want to have happen as a reader? Or is it something that you do want to have happen? Is it conflict? Is it tension? Is it release of tension? You know, like what is the, Mm -hmm. what's the purpose that you're serving? And then I think that drives how much of it do you want to show? How much do you want, what sort of language do you want to craft around it? Do you want to have it be a really emotional kind of spiritual moment? Do you want to have it be really like dry and like cut because you're like, this is maybe traumatic or terrifying or, you know, awkward. where do you want to use it? Awkward. And I think, you know, all of that can be really useful. So it's, what's the purpose? What's, what do you want the reader to get out of this? And if it's just, ooh, then maybe it's not good enough. <laughs> right. Right. Well, unless you're writing erotica. hmm titillation is not a good reason to put a sex scene in a story it it needs to be character plot or theme driven in order Mm -hmm. to be in there you know if you're Mm -hmm. writing erotica then of course that is part of the plot that is the purpose of well yeah the book and that's a different discussion (laughs) exactly Yeah. yeah yes but so let's say you decide there should be a sex scene and it's mm-hmm. going to be a sex scene, not just something alluded to and left off the page. Then the question becomes, how do you write it? You know, what kind of words do you use? How do you create mood around this? How do you evoke the feelings in the reader that the character has or that you want the reader to feel for on behalf of or project, you know, to take away from this moment. And I think word choice is so important. So many of our four letter euphemistic words are very harsh sounding. They have a lot of consonants and they're kind of sharp, (laughs) right? They can be Mm -hmm. unpleasant to hear in the mind's ear to see on the page. And then also, if you want a tender moment, there's no tenderness with those words, but you also don't want to be clinical, but you also don't want to be cute. (laughs) So, I mean, there is a real challenge here Mm -hmm. as a writer to craft the scene appropriately to convey your intentions, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is where I think you can't be uncomfortable as a writer. I think if you're uncomfortable writing about it, then you're, then you need to stop and just fade to black or whatever you need to do, because you do really kind of need to dig in. You probably need to write it six, seven, eight times from different, you know, different words and different actions, you know, whatever you want to do, you know, to be able to kind of figure out where is that sweet spot? Where am I sitting where I feel good about what the reader is going to get out of this? And then you probably do need to give it some distance and then come back and read it again and say, okay, yeah, that's delivering what I want it to deliver rather than, Mm -hmm. you know, because they're, yeah, like you said, language is 100% important in this. And there have been some amazing scenes that I have read in, you know, whether it be the ones that I'm thinking about are either romance novels or fantasy novels where the scene itself was very, very short, but Mm -hmm. the language is so packed full of imagery and just Mm. beauty that like it stuck with me. Right. And if I was to actually go through and analyze it, I'm, probably don't even really understand exactly what they were trying to get across physically, (laughs) right? But in terms of the emotion that I got out of it and the effect of the scene, it Mm -hmm. affected me profoundly. Um, And so I think that finding those words, the imagery, the feeling that you want to evoke, that's going to be that's going to be hard, <laughs> number right. one. And number two, I think we need to be able to sit there in that scene. And so if that's going to be something that makes you uncomfortable as a writer, you know, you need to figure out how to get out of that headspace, you know, and really be able to live in there for a, for a while and be able to marinate and percolate and write mm-hmm. your way through it until you find the right um, words. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Well said. 
Yeah. And I think something we need to keep in mind in terms of craft is point of view. We have our narrative point of view and our character's point of view. And if people are thinking, okay, it's a sex scene, so I have to be in my character's body. It's all about physicality. It's going to turn into this kind of weird choreographed, this touch, that (laughs) sensation, this, you know, play by play. (laughs) Yeah. Too much, but Mm -hmm. you can step in and out of your character's Mm -hmm. body to whatever degree you want to be there to whatever degree is effective and comfortable and creating that nuanced layered experience. And you could use your narrative lens to be above the covers. Mm -hmm. You know, you might see the people in bed, but like in a movie that keeps it clean, you never Mm -hmm. actually see that much skin, nothing below the shoulders or something right? kind of a thing. And it could still be incredibly effective depending on how it's written. So when you do what Catherine said and play with it and write it six times or a dozen times, don't just play with your word choice. Also play with where you're at in that point of view. Mm-hmm. How uh, intimate are you with the the visuals? You know, mm-hmm. are you p- zoomed in or pulled out? What specific sensory details are you going to use? It might not be the lover's touch on your protagonist's flesh. It might be the feel of the sheets. Mm-hmm rubbing on the shoulder or something. It might be the visual of um, the light, you know, reflecting, bouncing off of the ceiling or Mm -hmm. something like that. And so you have a lot of room for description and for sensory details and for narrative distance to play with here. Bring your whole setting into it, not just these bodies. Yeah, I like that play with the point of view because I feel like we do get so locked into I'm in third person, blah, 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 and like mm. limited and I can't be on the ceiling or fly on the wall. And it's like, actually, your reader probably won't, you know, see that as anything other than getting a, a better picture, right? And if you're using your narrative lens appropriately, it should just be as easy as right fixing it, right? And yes. then again... <laughs> And um, use your narrative you, lens throughout the book. Right, use the whole the whole time. <laughs> Don't just just for this one scene. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, the other thing I was thinking of is you can also like say you do have like a really tight first person point of view, and you do just like go really interior there. You could go really interior where you're really just focused on what they're feeling, thinking you know, mm-hmm. experiencing, and that also changes. You know, maybe they're experience is different based on, you know, their past experiences or, you know, whatever. And you can have all of that percolating in the character, pulling really interior instead of pulling out. So, right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Play, play with that narrative. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So physicality, choreography. Yep. Yeah. You got to do it. Yes. You've got to, you know, if you're not just looking at the light bouncing off the ceiling, (laughs) (laughs) you do need to figure out what the movements and the motions are Mm -hmm. going to be and how bodies are going to entangle. Um, So you do have to do some mental choreography and some thinking so that what you describe is not awkward, but then in crafting it, you know, give us the just right amount, not too Mm -hmm. little, not too much. Mm -hmm. And again, play with it, moving between the descriptions of physical motion Mm -hmm. and emotions and interiority and exteriority. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we, you had mentioned before, I think before we started recording, that it was similar to choreographing a fight scene, right? You mm-hmm. want to have, you want to know exactly what's happening and when, and then you can play with time and you can play with, you know, slowing it down or speeding it up to give that sense of, you know, whatever it is that you need to provide in that scene. Um, and so it's it's similar, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. In that you do need to know exactly what's happening. Otherwise, you're not going to convey it in a way that's understandable to the reader. Right. Yes. So when is 
enough enough. <laughs> I Can we give advice is, on this other than you no, just got to feel it? <laughs> I, no, well, they think this is, this is a know yourself and know your reader, right? Who are you? Who's your audience? Um, you know, what are you comfortable with as a writer and what do you, you know, hope that your readers are comfortable with or know that your readers are comfortable with based on kind of the books that are similar to your own, right? And I mean, every, I would say genre, but like every, you know, different reader is going to be different, comfortable with different things. And um, a lot of us self-regulate anyway, right? As we're reading a book and we know something's coming that we don't really care about, (laughs) you know, we'll just skim right over it or whatever. But there's also just like knowing where you're writing in. And I think um, even in literary, there's, you know, sections of, of within that, that have more or less depending on, you know, the author. And I think it's just up to the author and the reader to figure that out. You mm-hmm. know? I don't really think you could say do or do not. <laughs> I think you just say do it well, if you're going to do it. Yes. Yeah, no, that's true. Do it well. Yeah. We could say that about everything. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, yeah, that exactly. is exactly, that is the cardinal rule. You can yeah. do anything you want so long as you do it well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just every, I'm thinking about like, if you're looking at genres as holes, like there, there are entire genres where it's expected part of your book, right? And there are genres where it's expected multiple times throughout your book. Um, and then there are genres where if it happened, your readers might go, whoa, wait a second, or it better be serving that plot, you know, or it better be serving um, you know, something else that they are expecting, you know, because otherwise right. they're going to be like, this was just ridiculous. Gratuitous. And I don't read this kind of book. Right. <laughs> so, yes. um, but, you know, like, I, I think that's just entirely up to you and what kind of book and story you are writing. So, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I think if writers want to avoid putting their characters in bed, but still create the romantic intimacy, that sense of intimacy without actually following the characters to bed. I would think about watching a bunch of old Mm -hmm. um, Hollywood code movies where they couldn't put people in bed. So it isn't just like they're in bed and the sheets are over their chest and they're smoking cigarettes, right? It's even more subtle Mm -hmm. than that because there were things, there were cues they gave the audience before they did the fade to black. So Mm -hmm. we felt the romantic tension. Mm -hmm. We felt the sense of um, erotic compatibility, shall we say, Mm -hmm. without the characters touching. And, you know, of course, it'd be great if I could point to a bunch of scenes in books, but (laughs) not off the top of my head. And we would all have to go read dozens or hundreds of books to find yeah. those great scenes. So I would say just go and look at some post Hollywood code films, mm-hmm. you know, and see how they did it and watch and go, oh, where do I get that nice warm feeling that something is mm-hmm. about to happen? And how did they accomplish this without characters throwing their clothes off? Right. Exactly. Yeah, Mm -hmm. definitely. Do just do your due diligence, read, watch, you know, find scenes that you appreciate, you know, and figure out why you like them or why they do what the scene is accomplishing. What are the scene? I can't even talk. What is the scene accomplishing it? And how is it doing that effectively? And as you kind of backtrack through that, you're going to find ways that you yourself are going to be able to succeed in that, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, whether however much you want to show or not show. Right, right. And the other thing I would say is make sure whatever your characters do, it is true to those Mm -hmm. characters. Be specific. Don't just have two bodies in motion. Mm -hmm. Right. How do they go from dressed to undressed? How do they tease each other or, Mm -hmm. you know, flirt or whatever they need to do? Find things, figure out what only your character would do. Make mm-hmm. it specific, make it unique. And that's going to make it more interesting yes. and more exciting to your readers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me. Yeah. So we are back with a postscript to our episode about writing sex scenes because 
Catherine, you were just reading a book and came across an interesting note from the author yes, that uh, yeah. we wanted to add to the discussion. I did. And I know it's, um, you know, sorry, <laughs> but here we go. Um, so I was reading, been reading a bunch of urban fantasy. Everybody knows this uh, by now, but I've been uh, reading a series by Laurel K. Hamilton that actually came, started coming out in the 90s. And um, in the afterward, the author's note at the back of, um, it was actually book one that I was reading. And she mentions that um, in book five, she had this scene coming up and she had a conundrum because she didn't know that she wanted to write a graphic scene. Um, But that when she looked back at her own writing in the, in the previous books and within her character and the fact that she was so upfront and in your face about her violence and everything else that happens on the page that she didn't actually have a choice in order to remain true to the character and the voice of the novels that she couldn't shy away from it. So I think um, adding to this conversation of, you know, what you're comfortable with and how you feel about this or that or the other thing is what is true to your character? What is true to your narrative voice? Um, You know, what else are you writing about that kind of informs how you would interact with this subject on the page. Mm -hmm. And also what precedent have you set if you have set Mm -hmm. one, you know, this example you're giving addresses voice and style, but also because she had already set a precedent with the violence, she couldn't change that precedent or change, alter her approach her when camera to... never turned away or turned off or black, you know, fade to black. So to do that in a different ty- kind of scene, a different kind of graphicness, right, would have been, would have missed the mark. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Right. It would have been disingenuous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think even if we haven't set the precedent with readers yet, as she has, mm-hmm. we need to realize that for ourselves when we're planning our writing. So if you're going Mm -hmm. to have a story that is, you know, the lights are on, we're doing everything. (laughs) Everything center uh, stage, right? Exactly. Yes. Then, then that it has to really apply to everything. So you might not feel squeamish or inhibited around the kind of violence in your story, but you would around sex scenes or vice versa. Right. So whatever level of presence and it, it Mm -hmm. can be real and full and graphic without being gory or repugnant or, and I don't know this particular Mm -hmm. author. Exactly. But yeah, no, it means it's set it for yourself. Right. But mm -hmm. that it does apply to more than just sex scenes. Mm -hmm. Be consistent. Yeah. Any other thoughts or takeaways about this author's note that you wanted to share? No, I just, I hadn't really thought about it from that angle. So I thought it was important to uh, pop back in and make sure we addressed it. So thank you for listening to the StoryWorks Roundtable. Find all our shows, show notes, and videos at storyworkspodcast.com.